Now, what starts to happen once I get my shadow, once I have my light, I'm going to start to understand this relationship between this and this. It's almost like these colors are having a conversation. So then I'll know a little bit better what to do in here because this is the transition between uh, those colors. That's why I very often like getting my abs what I call the absolutes, the lightest uh, color established and the darkest color established. Then I can figure out that mid mid range um, and, and really make sense out of what is happening between those colors, how they're relating, how they're conversing. You know, what is the value of that? It's certainly darker than what I have now if I'm just looking at the gray of paper, right? This is not as dark as my shadow, but it's probably more sort of between a dark and a mid-tone, I would say. If I think of that on the value scale, I'm going to start again with the reddish orange because that is what dominates here. And now I'm going to put a little bit of green into this. Now, this is definitely very, very orange compared to this. This is, this is duller, slower in chroma um, and perhaps a little darker as well. So the green will also help to darken this. Now, that's the other thing to think about uh, too is what, where do you want the color to pop? Because it, wherever you want a color to pop, whatever color is next to that, you want to tone down a little bit. But to make this pop a little bit, I have this darker and a more neutral color next to it. And then I have this darker and more neutral color next to it. So immediately that's going to draw more attention into the brighter color. Like that's what you're going to notice first. And you can see how fun this becomes. It's just playing with colors, as I said, looking at relationships. And, you know, you're discovering things. You're, you're figuring out what you want to do as you're drawing, too. Like, it's not always a, some kind of a master plan. We don't always know right immediately what, what we're going for. It's through the process that we start to discover uh, what works and what doesn't. So now it kind of transitions into this cool, right? So we're kind of moving over here, very warm, more orange on this side, more orange on this side, more orange to the top. Then we kind of transition into this cool highlight. We start moving back into some of the orange, reddish oranges down here. And then we actually start to transition into some cools again as we move into the shadow. So we have that that alternating pattern of warm, cool, warm, cool. This has a lot to do with form. When you're trying to enhance form and make the form of something stand out, make something look rounder. Um, obviously there's shifts of value, right? That's obvious, but those subtle shifts within the hues of things can do wonders for the subtlety of the picture, right? And the and the one of the biggest things too is the the hues are always more subtle. Like if you were to take a black and white photograph of this painting, you would lose all the variation because because a lot of these uh, color variations are of the same value, right? So the values like a more simple, more obvious, more easier to see. I think which is why a lot of people struggle so much with color. But when you get into these color shifts, you know, it does so, so much. Okay, so I'm just speeding up the last part of this video. And here you see me toning my shadows down using uh, the complementary color. And I'm just gonna continue to tweak some of these other colors. And if you'd like to see the full video, uh, I do have a course available, which uh, shows all of this in real time. And uh, you can find that on my online school, which is www.riverafineartstudios.thinkific.com. Once again, that's www.riverafineartstudios.thinkific.com.